Good morning. Good morning, everyone. We'll get started. And uh, thank you for being here. I will call the uh, Pauley County Board of Commissioners July the 9th work session to order. And uh, just thank you all for being here. I'm sitting with elected officials. Brian, can you bring the, the sign up sheet? You've got a phone still turned on like I do? Silence that. And uh, we are very excited today to have Pastor Wayne Strickland with us from Bethany Christian Church to bring us our invitation and lead us in the place of flag. Stand your ankle. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we come before you this morning, God. We just uh, we seek your guidance. Uh, we ask that you would lead us in the right direction, God, that we would follow your guidance. God, we seek your wisdom. God, I pray that, uh, that we would make the right decisions daily. We will make those decisions according to your will, God, and in the best interest of the, the people that live in this county. God, we ask for your continued protection for those who live here, those who work here, those who play here. And God, we want to thank you for those who serve. We want to thank you for those who protect us, those who put their life on the lines for us. God, we thank you for the freedoms that we have in this great nation, in this state, and in this county. God, we want to thank you for those that you have put into position. And I'll just pray for them daily, God. I pray that you would protect them. I pray that you would guide them. I pray that you would direct them. And God, I pray that we would we would always see uh, things with your eyes, God. We would always see where there's a need, where there's a hurt. Um, that you would just allow us to, to see those things and direct us to action. And God, we ask all this in the name of uh, your Son, Jesus. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pastor yes, Strickland, thank you so much for being here. We, we do appreciate it. Appreciate you. Well, everyone had a great uh, Fourth of July, favorite vacations, and uh, we did have some minutes uh, from June 25th, 2019. Uh, the work session minutes and also the board meeting minutes. And the uh, June 26th um, Sandy Caker Town Hall meeting minutes are available for review. Uh, on our uh, positively polling this morning, we've got a special compilation of uh, different events that have happened around the county, so let's enjoy that together. Budget hearing um, 
which sounds like uh, you know something that's the same, but uh, it, it is uh, expressed differently, explained differently. The budget hearing will be held during the work session on July 23rd at 10 a.m. This is uh, Deidre Holden asked me to uh, announce that if you're interested in being a poll worker, there's a poll worker meet and greet on August the 13th <coughs> at um, 2019, of course, at 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. and uh, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. right here in this building, the administrative building. And um, you can actually get paid to be a poll worker and serve your county at the same time. So if you're interested in that and uh, watch it on TV or in here, please mark that date. We have no invited guests this morning under bid awards. Uh, we're going to award the uh, Harmony Grove Church Road curb realignment project to the lowest responsible bidder, Barto Paving Incorporated, the amount of $469,189.33. And to present it, Ms. Pollard and Mr. Jones. Thank you. Good morning. On um, June 14th, we opened bids, had two participants for the Harmony Grove Church Road um, project to realign two curbs, and we received two bids, and we're recommending award to the lowest bid, um, Archer Paving, in the amount of $469,000. Now, ready to go? Thank you. Thank you. Let me give you a little background on the project itself. Um, you know, Harmony Grove Church Road is a two-lane undivided roadway in the north section of the county. Um, this section of roadway has approximately 6,000 vehicles per day when school is in session. Um, the traffic on Harmony Grove Church Road south of Bob Grove Drive has increased dramatically over the past 10 plus years, particularly with the Burke Hickory Elementary, uh, Clure Middle, and North Poly High Schools once those are open. The project location itself is between Bentley Station Drive and Hickory Point Drive in the Crowville community. We wanted to do something for Crowville since they've been a long time community with not a whole lot of recognition. Um, you know, Harmony Grove Church Road itself is posted for a speed limit of 35 miles per hour, where, and the curvature for this road is approximately 25 miles per hour. Um, there's been six <coughs> documented runoff road crashes in this project location area over the past two years. Um, project itself will you know redesign the curvature so it'll meet a design speed of 35 miles an hour which is the posted speed limit um, our current swaps list has 1.2 million dollars allocated towards um, roadway improvements on Harmony Grove Church Road and so the money for this will come from SWAS. we also have additional funds allocated to future projects um, probably curb realignment projects on different portions of Harmony Grove Church Road and this will just be the first one as part of that list um, you know we're hopeful that the Realignment will reduce the number and severity of crashes that occurred on this curb location. Um, you know, as previously discussed, Bartow Paving was a low bidder with a you know, bid cost of $469,189.33. The completion time for the project is six months from the notice to proceed being signed. Um, I've talked with the project estimator for Bartow Paving. They plan on working on the new sections of the road first and then tie into the existing. So hopefully we'll also be able to work with the school calendar and make sure that the disruptions in traffic uh, are minimal. Um, I think that's about it. So if you have any other questions or concerns, I'm available for these questions. Will they work during school transportation hours? Yes, they'll, you know, hopefully they'll be working, you know, on the areas off the road right now and we'll make sure that the disruptions are minimal. We don't want lane closures and lane shutdowns when the school is in, in terms of entering or exiting the school time. So we'll make sure that that is held to the minimum. But say during 11 o'clock, there's as much traffic as there is in the AMP gallery. Other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. We have a couple of direct reports this morning. Uh, Mr. Kelly Comstock with Brandon Call is going to give us an update on the Richmond Creek Reservoir Water Supply Program. Thank you for being here, Kelly. Thank you, Commissioners. Um, it's an honor to be here today and give you an update on the Richmond Creek Water Supply Program. Um, today, I wanted to step through progress for each of the different areas. Um, sorry about that. 
Good. Um, if you recall the last quarterly update we gave to the board, we were facing some challenges at the river. Um, the Corps of Engineers was, was uh, dealing with the um, tremendous amount of rain by releasing a tremendous amount of water. Um, we saw historic levels within that section of the Etowah River and it was impacting our, our site. Um, we, this was the, a picture of it at, at 14 foot stage. It actually went up close to 18 foot um, ultimately. But uh, good news, this is, this is how the site looks today. So we basically completed all of the work to bring the uh, grade up to final excavation, or the final, the final grade, the excavation up to final grade. Um, we've completed all the work at the bank, so we are no longer influenced at all by whatever the core does within the river. We're, we're at a sufficient elevation to be above any potential impact. Um, we've made a lot of great progress out there. We've completed the backfill. We've completed uh, placement of walls within the wet well uh, structure, and we've finished all of the piles. Uh, these are auger cast piles that go down up to 240 feet was the deepest one that actually went down underground to provide a stable uh, structure from bedrock all the way up to the building itself. Um, that completes the final subsurface work associated with the total program. Um, so there's no more rock or, or piles or anything associated with the program that will be taking place. This frees the contractor up to, to begin work on the, on the building itself um, and will move very quickly uh, coming up to, up to the final completion. Water treatment plant has made tremendous progress over this last quarter. You can see it's really taking shape. Um, they've done sort of final seeding and grassing around the site. It's taken very well. Um, they've done paving around the site and basically all of the structures are, are nearing completion. We're doing finishing work like painting, uh, final door installation, flooring installation, preparing for furniture to be installed at the facility, um, completing installation startup of all of the mechanical systems, the process equipment, the pumps, um, as well as the building HVAC systems. Uh, as I mentioned, we did complete paving around the site, and right now the big focus is on getting all the electrical systems up and going and getting all the controls so that everything, everything works properly. We anticipate the county would start bringing staff on later this summer um, so that they could come up to speed with uh, the equipment so that when the plant starts the commissioning process, they're, they're fully trained in being able to, to, um, to bring the plant online. Uh, one of the other major structures is the reservoir intake. This is the structure that pulls water out of the reservoir and pumps it into the water treatment plant. Um, we have placed the pumps within that structure and they're in the process of, of getting those configured for startup. There are three pumps and each one of those can pump uh, 9 million gallons a day and that's close to what your current capacity is or what your current demand as a county is right now. Um, so you've got three pumps initially, 18 million gallons a day will be the treatment capacity, and then we have uh, one spare as a, as a standby. Um, we've continued the electrical and control system installation and done fencing and security around, around that structure so that it, it's getting ready. And then the dam has really taken shape over the last quarter. We've made tremendous progress. We're now 90% complete. Um, if you recall, there's about 2.5 million cubic yards of soil that is going into this embankment and we've done 2.3 million uh, cubic yards so far. So we've got about 250,000 cubic yards. We anticipate that being able to be done within the next month and a half to two months. Um, we're finalizing the work on the primary outlet structure. This is the structure that if you ever needed to drain the reservoir, you could, or if there ever was an overflow event, um, water would go through the, the top of this and down through a pipe in the center. Um, it also allows for the continuous release of water downstream into Richland Creek. Um, so the contractor's building a bridge out to that right now. Um, they did put the, the gate in place as well. The one um, contract that's still to be done, if you recall, is the uh, timber harvest. And that's the remaining area of the pool of the reservoir. We didn't want to do that until the very end because if we cleared that entire 300 acres every time it rained, we'd be dealing with a lot more um, more silt than we even have uh, to deal with. So we're at the point right now where it's going to take a couple months for that to happen, and we're getting close to the point where we're going to start filling the reservoir. Um, so we have issued an RFP for that, and that, that'll be coming in uh, the end of this week, and so it'll likely come to the board um, at, your, at your next commission meeting. Um, the finished water pipeline project is the final project, and the first phase of that is complete. I'm happy to say that's all of the work. That's 11 miles. It goes from the plant along Highway 61 all the way to Walray. So once again, really appreciate the public's 
um, working with us in this. We recognize there was a lot of, of um, diversions and, and temporary red light shutdowns that had to take place to allow the, the work to uh, take place safely and protect the contractors and the people and the general public that are driving by the excavation. All that work is done. Uh, it looks great. It looks better than before in terms of the, uh, the sight line along, along Highway 61. Um, the phase two pipeline that goes from Wall Raven here to the Watson complex, um, that's going well. We've completed close to 5,000 feet, so we're, we're approaching 50% of that pipeline. And we've completed seven of the nine bores. And if you see right up here on Highway 278, they're working on one of those bores. They're boring underneath Highway 278. Um, and we've also begun construction of the booster pump station. That'll get constructed over the next couple of months, and that's in the parking lot of the Wellstar uh, complex that's down by the uh, DDS building. Um, so if you drive over there, you can sort of see that construction that, that's ongoing. So um, that's, a, that's a brief update for all of the, the projects. When we look at schedule on when we anticipate everything coming online, uh, the raw water pipeline that goes from the intake to the reservoir is complete. We anticipate the water plant um, being complete in August. The dam, we're looking at September timeframe uh, for that being complete. The Etowa River pump station will be early December. Um, at that point, we'll be able to start pumping into and filling the dam itself, or filling the reservoir itself. And we're uh, tracking the finished water pipeline to be complete in the, in the September timeframe. So we're still on track to being able to fill the reservoir um, by the end of this year. Uh, we did have, in the, in the past uh, quarter, we did have a great tour of the facilities. We had 85 people come out. Um, and take different tours of, the, um, of the, the water treatment plant, the reservoir intake, and the dam. We videoed that and we put it on the website so you can go there and take the virtual tour and, and see, I think it's about 10 or 12 minutes, and you can see all the construction and everything that's happening. So if you didn't have an opportunity to take part in that tour and you wanted to see what was talked about, uh, please go to rcrwater.com and take the virtual tour. We are looking to do another tour probably late this year. Uh, definitely when we're starting to pump, we think that that'll be a, a momentous occasion when the reservoir starts to get fill in. Uh, it's a very neat overlooked spot where the water's going to become be, uh, cascading into the reservoir. So we definitely want to have a public outreach event at that, at that time. So with that, I'd be happy to take any questions. Are you a North Carolina fan of the Blue Roofs? I, I am not. <laughs> that, that is typically um, what is done in a water plant. Um, if you if you talk to most utilities, they, they like the color blue associated with water. So I would say nine times out of ten, uh, when an owner picks the color of a roofing system in a water plant, it's typically blue. Thank, Thank you. Kelly. Great report. And we have Ms. Littman who's going to come forward and actually talk to us about two things, the update on uh, permits and licenses, and also something that she's taken the lead on and been involved in, the uh, <coughs> ordinance changes and development of ordinances and that update process. And thank you. Thank you. And good morning to everyone. Um, this quarterly report of building permits and business license, um, the majority of this report is done in fiscal year, so it wraps up fiscal year 19. Um, if you look at the first slide, this is the total number of building permits that were issued. Um, we were at 5,915, which was slightly less than last year. It was about 66 permits less than last year. Our next slide is the total inspections per month, um, and that number is also a little less than last year based on the, the fewer number of permits that were issued. The next slide shows the number of new residential and non-residential permits issued going back to um, fiscal year 2013. Um, you can tell that everything, there's been generally a trend upwards, um, but from 18 to 19, the single family residential permits went down, but I am happy to report that um, non-residential increased by about a little over 30. This next slide, and I think this shows a lot about the value of permits, this slide shows the value of the non-residential versus single family permits that were issued. Um, I will point out a few things. In fiscal year 13 was that when the permits for the hospital were issued. Fiscal year 2017 were when the permits for Richland Creek Reservoir were issued and fiscal year 19 is when we issued the permits for the um, Palm County Adult Detention and Law Enforcement Center. So, I mean, it is interesting if you go back and you look at how many more permits were, but then you look at the value, and the value of commercial property is much higher than um, residential property. 
I always like to compare the permits issued in all the posts. Um, post 4 continues to be the, the winner in the, since 2010, about 60% of permits have been issued in post 4. But in the past two years, that, that balance is equalizing. If you look at the permits issued in fiscal year, or actually this goes to calendar year 19, um, post 4 is down to 46% and the other three permits, I'm sorry, post, post 1 has 23% and post 2 and 3 are at 15 and 16% respectively. Um, and if you're worried about this, um, this slide is from John Hunt's Market Watch. Um, he's a real estate market analyst, and this slide shows the top 10 cities and their permits. And you can see there's a downward trend everywhere as far as permits go. And I couldn't have summarized it better. There's no cheap lots, and there's massive resale comp competition in the housing market. Um, each, each time I do this, I want to bring something a little different to you, and um, this is also from Market Watch. Um, it's a quote from Robert Dietz, who was the National Association of Home Builders Chief Economist. Um, the comment is, there's also been a start of shift to building smaller homes and townhomes. I'm bullish on townhomes over the next few years. They are a perfect bridge from renting to home ownership for first time home buyers. A big reason why the permits are down, um, millennials are buying houses. They, they, they prefer to rent or live with their parents. <laughs> And so they are just not buying houses. Um, but I wanted to show sort of an increase in single family attached permits that has occurred in the county in the past two years. As you can see from 2012 to 2017, it was almost a negligible amount. But in 2018 and 19, that has spiked up. And um, over 75% of those permits are in the city of Hiram. And switching over to um, our business license or our occupational taxes, um, the total for fiscal year 19, we had 667 new business license issued. Um, as of yesterday, the total active permits or licenses we have is 3,121. And that split is still heavily based on home occupations. Right now, 72% of all the business licenses we have are home occupations. Um, looking at new businesses, business types that are issued, um, in 2019, the number one category is service, followed by retail and construction. But I would like to point out that 32 of the new businesses, somewhere in their business type, refer to e-commerce. So I want you to remember that phrase, because that's going to come back in my next report. And just showing... Again, with the majority of businesses being small or home occupations, 93% um, of those businesses have zero to five employees. And now switching over, I hope you can read this. This is on the whiteboard. This is kind of the doodling we have from our meetings. And the most important phrase, the phrase that's been on there since we began this process in late April is, Paulding County is open for business. We began working with um, the Bentley firm, which is a law firm out of Marietta, specifically Fred Bentley Jr. and Linda Brett in the end of April. Um, a team of staff from community development, DOT, the water system, city of Hiram have been meeting every Thursday from 1 to 4. Um, we also have two interns from KSU who are um, great note takers and researchers for us and they're getting class credit at no cost to the county. And we've been working on a three-pronged approach. We've been looking at three things. Um, one is tools in the book. We have several books that if you want to develop a piece of property in Union City that you have to refer to. Just a few. We have the Code of Ordinances, the Zoning Ordinance, Development Regulations, Standard Detail, Building Codes, Life Safety Codes, and I could go on. Um, our goal at the end of this process is to have what's called a Unified Development Code. So if you want to build something in Pauling County, you have one book that you need to go to. We're never going to separate the code of, there's still going to be items in the code of ordinances, and I'm going to give Lori credit. The code of ordinances says you need to have a pipe. The development regulations say what kind of pipe and where that pipe goes. And that's, that's never going to change. We're still going to have two ordinances and this unified development code, but we've been working to streamline those, and we've been looking, um, and the, most times when we meet, we split into two groups. There's the development regulation side, and the zoning ordinance side. And on the zoning ordinance side, 
we've been looking at definitions, new, I guess that everything with a focus on business, new commercial zoning districts, how to make getting a business open on the zoning side easier and faster. Um, the second um, thing we've been looking at is the process. We've been looking at how the workflows as to what happens when plans are submitted and how does the ref um, flow go. If you'll see on our board, it's kind of in the middle, um, ready, get set, go. We kind of ditched the get set. So we just want it to be called ready, set, go. So we want to have a three-step process for how when somebody submits plans that you get ready, you get set, and then you go. We want to make it as fast and streamlined as possible. The, the third element is really um, the economic development changes that you guys made to um, Pauling County Economic Development Inc. and once a new director is in place, we would certainly welcome them at the table to have their input. And um, remember I mentioned e-commerce. One of the things that we're really looking at, we're trying to be proactive. We're not just addressing the deficiencies, but we're trying to look to the future. I wish I had put this slide on there, but in June of 18, the share market value of Amazon was over $889 billion. Whereas the market share of Walmart, Target, and other brick and mortar stores was $254 billion. So we are all changing how we're shopping. Everything is e, e-commerce. So we are looking, I mean, we're creating new definitions for things. We had a drawing of a, like a food truck court on our thing, and somebody erased that. But um, just trying to look to the future with new definitions and be in advance of what's coming. And so I would estimate that we're maybe about 25, 30% done, um, but I would invite anybody on a Thursday to come in and, and join our meetings, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. The last time they did really preview was close to 20 years ago. Probably the 90s. <laughs> 99. Yeah. Could you tell Commissioner Stover what I dining is instead of the e dining? It's I, dining. I would have to. I don't want to misquote that. I believe Jody Palmer and Hire wrote that definition, so I would have to. Um, don't have that one off the top of my head, but it is. I mean, there's uh, apparently there's a Kroger in Cartersville that is the place to be. They have a bar inside of it, and grocery stores where people go. I mean, if you look at our Walmart here, you're going to be able to take your pet, go to the dentist, get your hair cut, get a pedicure. You probably order your groceries online and you pick them up when you're all done. I think if you actually do go to the store, the way you shop has changed. I've been to about half the meeting. It's a lot of fun to go in and, and see the, the progress that they're making. And Hiram's really heavily participated. They're always there. Um, and Bentley does a good job of bringing, bringing out the talent that we have. George is there a lot. Uh, Lori, uh, IT's in there. We have none of the public who have signed up for agenda items. We have no consent agenda items. We have no old business. Under new business, number one is discuss action to approve change order six to Arcadis uh, US Inc. for additional services during construction, materials, testing. And inspection services for the Richland Creek Dam project in the amount of $675,065. Funding will be offset from retainage withheld per the dam contract as a special damage assessment to the dam contractor. Or, it's not funny. Uh, special damage assessment to the dam contractor. <laughs> For not achieving contracted schedule, and uh, Ms. Ashmore and Mr. Comstock will uh, enlighten us on this. Mr. Comstock is going to present this. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Arcadis and their subcontractor, uh, P. Mangio Technical, they are the engineer of record, uh, the safe dams engineer for the, uh, for the dam. And um, part of the requirement for a dam, construct, dam construction, we need to think different way to do this. <laughs> um, part of the requirement for the embankment construction is that um, you need to have a engineer present uh, monitoring the and actually a team of people monitoring the material that's being used 
So basically, as they excavate soil, the condition of that soil is only suitable to be used in different areas of the embankment. And so they basically make a call on the spot. Uh, they do all the materials testing. They look at the moisture content. They, they look at basically all the requirements of what's going in. So we have a team of four to six people that are out there full time doing that throughout the construction period um, to make sure the embankment meets all the specified requirements. And that's, that's required per the, the safe embankment, safe dams, uh, <laughs> permit that's required for construction. Um, Brad Cole Construct Contractors is the contractor that's building the dam and they um, had an original schedule that was per their contract. Um, there, were, there was a lot of rain associated with, with the uh, period. The contract had certain requirements in it for uh, rain days, and when you take those requirements into consideration, um, they were contractually to meet their substantial completion date on December 14th of 2019. Um, due to early issues that they had in logistics and scheduling, um, it, it set them behind and they did not make that up. So um, we're looking at uh, end of August for them being to substantial completion. Um, so there is that additional period of time that the engineer has to be present on site during that construction process. We can't just not inspect during uh, that last you know, seven months of construction, obviously. So the way their contract is written is that if they did not meet their substantial completion deadline, they are responsible for two different forms of damages. Uh, a liquidated damage, which is to the county um, at the rate of $1,000 a day, so they will be assessed that. And special damages to cover engineering inspection, um, so they will be assessed that as well. And as this states, um, the county currently withholds retainage on their contract to 5%, so we've got about $2.5 million of retainage that's withheld. Um, so they will just not be paid back all of that retainage um, to offset the special damages as well as the liquidated damages. So um, although this is additional services that the engineer has to pay for, it is basically neutral to the overall budget because it's, it's less money that's going to be paid to the contractor to offset this. Um, so the total is $675,065 associated with that for that team of inspectors from, from the December 18th period to the anticipated uh, completion date that is, that is the end of August. Tried to not say it too many times. <laughs> so, any, any questions associated with it? Not a great report. Good explanation. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you sir. very much. Yeah. Number two, discuss action to authorize the chairman to enter into an intergovernment agreement with the Pauley County Board of Education, defining responsibilities and cost sharing for the construction of a right turn lane on Colbert Road between Abney Elementary School and Gullich Road. Mr. George Jones. Let me give you some background one before we got to the meeting of the IGA. Um, when county schools are in session, you know, the driveway exiting Abney Elementary onto Colbert, particularly in the a and peak hour, experiences severe congestion just due to the amount of folks dropping off their kids to go to school. It's exacerbated by the fact there's only about 300 feet from the Colbert um, driveway at Abney to Bellage Road. Um, there's currently one westbound lane on Colbert Road from the Abney driveway to Village. We modeled intersection operations, our traffic operations section did, with the addition of another westbound left turn lane, or westbound lane on Culver Road. Um, the lane would serve traffic turning out of the Abney Elementary School and turning right on to Road. The addition of the turn lane indicated improved operation by reducing delays, particularly for that right turning traffic, which also helps the left turning traffic because cars aren't stacking up as much. Um, the cost-benefit analysis indicated that the project was viable. Um, we solicited three bids for the turn lane installation and with negotiations were able to award the work to Bush Thompson Enterprises in the amount of $49,910. Um, the work is to start this month and will be open by July 28th. The county portion of the work will be, done by, will be funded by SPOS and as part of the project itself, we'll be doing some work on Board of Education property, and the Board of Education has agreed to um, fund the work that's done on their part of the property for this project. I'm assuming it will be less than $10,000. Um, as part of that work, you know, we're requesting the Board of Education to enter an IGA with the county, which they agreed to. Um, the IGA basically drafted the responsibility between the county and the Board of Education for this project and the cost. Um, that. 
I've been in communications with uh, Superintendent <coughs> Todd, and he's presenting this uh, IGA to their board tonight for approval. And um, again, I just uh, I like to thank our Traffic Operations Division, Engineering Division, and Construction Division for getting this project delivered on an expedited time table. Thank you. Thank you. Make a lot of parents out there happy. They have long phone calls. You jump on board on things. That's a good project. Not a whole lot of money. Thanks. So thank you on the staff. Sure. Appreciate it. Great job, George. Got a little alibi announcement here. If you want to see a, a few shovels stuck in the ground on Thursday morning at 10 o'clock, on the west side of 92, kind of across from Pine Valley Road. It will be, uh, I'm excited and we'll be celebrating uh, the groundbreaking for Greystone ENC's new headquarters. So it's something you're very interested in and you'd like to, to join us for that. Um, I think Mr. Hart's gonna sing the national anthem or any other, proud to be an American or any of his favorites. <laughs> Thank you for it. That's the conclusion of regular business. So we have no executive session today. Um, no one has signed up uh, on non-agenda items. And at this time, I want to get a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Mr. Davis, is there a second? Second. Thank you. Mr. Stover, all those in favor, say aye. 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 We stand adjourned.